Support Move University in the production of more video tutorials by making a financial contribution or by getting yourself one of these t-shirts. Details under the Support Move section on MoveUniversity.com. The link will be in the description below. Thank you and enjoy. Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about temperature and heat. What is temperature? Temperature is a measure of how hot or cold something is, especially relative to something else. How does that relate to heat? Heat is actually the energy, it's the energy that flows between things that are at different temperatures. Specifically, from the thing with the higher temperature, the thing that's hotter, to the thing that's, to the thing with the lower temperature, right, the thing that's colder. Now I want you to consider something real quick. Imagine a large pot of boiling water and a small pot of boiling water. Temp water boils, assuming we're at standard pressure, which is one atmosphere, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So if this water is boiling and this water is boiling, they're both at 100 degrees Celsius, they're at the same temperature. So what we see here, we see here that despite the fact that this is a small pot and this is a large pot, they are both at the same temperature. So despite their different amounts, they have the same temperature. So what that means is that temperature is an intensive property, which is something we talked about in the previous video. It's a property that is independent of the amount of substance. However, the large pot of boiling water versus the small pot of boiling water, the large pot has more of this water at that temperature. And here we have, a, in the smaller pot, we have a less water at that temperature. So over here we have in the hot, in the large pot we have a higher amount of heat energy. It took more energy to get this water to this temperature. Here there's less heat energy. There's still heat energy of course, just less. But that basically I mean I said that because I wanted to mention that energy is an extensive property. It's something that does depend on the amount of substance you have. Okay. That's all I want to say now about those two things, just because we're talking about the basics. On to something else that's um, definitely, definitely important, is the three temperature scales that are used. And they are degrees Celsius, Kelvin, and degrees Fahrenheit. Notice that there is the little degree symbol for Celsius and for Fahrenheit but there isn't one for Kelvin. We don't say degrees Kelvin, we just say Kelvin. So we don't say if something is at 400 degrees, uh, 400 Kelvin, we say 400 Kelvin, not 400 degrees Kelvin. Um, so one thing I will mention is that Fahrenheit is pretty much used in the US and a few other countries, but overall not that many countries use it and in science it's pretty useless unless, like the only time we ever really talk about it is if we're taking a temperature from Fahrenheit and trying to convert it into these other two scales. Um, so Fahrenheit's pretty whack. <laughs> um, anyway, so Celsius is used pretty often, actually. And it's based on the, um, the freezing point and the boiling point, which I'll abbreviate as FP and BP for now, the freezing point and boiling point of water at one atmospheric pressure. Okay, so um, so that's Celsius there. Um, Kelvin is actually called the um, the absolute scale. We'll talk about why in just a second. It's called the absolute scale, and it's kind of the science go-to, right? It's like the uh, it's the SI unit of uh, for temperature, and so most of the time, I mean, when possible, like. I don't even want to say when possible. A lot of the times Kelvin is used, and it's it's really the go-to when it comes to uh, um, using a temperature scale in science. Um, now back to Celsius here. In Celsius, the freezing point for water, we're talking about water here, the freezing point for water at, in degrees Celsius is, um, is zero. So zero degrees Celsius is the freezing point of water, and the boiling point is at 100 degrees Celsius. The freezing point and boiling point of water in Kelvin are the freezing point is uh, 273.15 Kelvin and the boiling point is 373.15 Kelvin. Okay. 
uh, for Fahrenheit, the freezing point is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and the boiling point is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, not too important there. Um, I mean, it's important to know, but it's not used very often. Now, note something that you might notice is that the freezing point and boiling point of water in Celsius are 100 units different. And they're, in Kelvin, it's the same thing. It's also 100 units different. So what's important to notice there is that they have the same degree, like the, each degree um, or unit is the same, oops, is the same magnitude, is the same magnitude or size. Each degree size or each unit size is one one hundredth, one one hundredth of the difference between the freezing point and boiling point of water. The so so one unit change in degree Celsius is equal to one unit change in Kelvin as far as the difference, right? The magnitude of the difference from one unit to the next is the same, but they differ in in what they um in, they differ in their zero. Okay, what's zero mean in each case? Zero degrees Celsius is defined as the freezing point of water. Zero Kelvin, however, is not, not the same thing. Zero Kelvin is, is absolute zero. Absolute zero. And what that is, that is the lowest temperature that is theoretically possible. Theoretically possible. That's an important idea there, because this means that that zero Kelvin if is the lowest possible, you know, temperature. That means that all Kelvin values are positive. Of course, zero is just zero, but that means you can't have negative Kelvin degrees. You can have negative degrees Celsius. Okay. Now, one thing that's really, really important when it comes to these three temperature scales is being able to convert from one temperature scale to another. So uh, here I've drawn, or I've written down some formulas. The first one here relates the temperature T sub K, that's the temperature in Kelvin, and T sub uh, degree Celsius. So this one's solved for temperature in Kelvin, which means that if you want to find the temperature in Kelvin and you know the temperature in degrees Celsius, you just take the temperature in degrees Celsius and add 273.15. Now, if the opposite is true and you have the temperature in Kelvin and you want to convert the temperature in degrees Celsius, you would just solve for T sub degrees Celsius. And with that, would, so you just subtract 273.15 from both sides and you get the temperature in degrees Celsius is equal to the temperature in Kelvin minus 273.15. Now, what if you have Fahrenheit going on? So if you have the temp if you want to find the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, you would have to take nine fifths the temperature in degrees Celsius and add thirty two to get that temperature. And if you wanted to find the temperature in degrees Celsius, you would just solve this equation for T sub C. Um, so you would subtract thirty two, so you have T sub uh, degrees F minus 32, and then multiply that by 5 ninths. Multiply both sides by 5 ninths, which would give you this. Now, so these are four different equations, if you, I mean, if you think about it that way. But I wouldn't think about it that way. What I would do is I would just memorize this one and this one, and then manipulate them, if need be, to these other two, right, if you ever need them. So if you know these two, then you should be able to convert any temperature uh, from any temperature scale to any other. Okay. Hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, be sure to hit it with a like and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, be sure to share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks and happy studying.